This is a short film about how the brain learns. I'm not a neuroscientist or a brain surgeon, but a mere history teacher. So actually this is a film about how I think the brain learns, based on the research that I've done. The story of the evolution of our brain starts back at the time of the primordial swamp. As we evolved from algae, grew legs and made our way onto land, our brains evolved too. It could now make a choice. It could either attack something and eat it, or run away from something because it was going to be attacked and eaten. It was always in a state of stress. This part of our brain is called the amygdala, and it is continually raging at the base of our brains, constantly choosing between fight and flight. In states of high stress, this part of our brain can take over. As we evolved as a species, our brains evolved too. We developed into fluffy mammals, needing milk from our mothers to survive. Now, clearly, if you attack and eat your mother or run away from your mother, you're not going to get any milk. So our brains evolved too, and a new layer of our brain wrapped itself around the amygdala. This is known as the limbic system. If we are feeling secure, nurtured and cared for by another creature, then our limbic system controls the amygdala and prevents us running away or attacking them. It not only means that we can build relationships with our mother, but also with our siblings, our father or our peers, so that we can begin to live together and start hunting together to survive. Finally, as a species, we began to use tools develop language, introduce farming and invent nuclear bombs. And our brains evolved too. An upper cortex developed around the limbic system. This is our intellectual brain. This is the part of the brain that's examined by GCSEs, A-levels and at university. So traditionally teachers have focused solely on teaching the upper cortex of the brain, our intellectual self. Now this makes perfectly logical sense, as this is the part of the brain that needs to be developed if students are to pass exams, get higher paid jobs and lead healthier, happier lives. Most secondary school teachers spend little time on nurturing the limbic system or emotional brain. But in schools we should be focused as much on developing the limbic system, our emotional brain, as we should on developing our upper cortex, our intellectual brain. As we have seen, it is the limbic system that controls the amygdala, not our, our, our emotional selves, not our rational selves. So unless a student is feeling safe, supported and nurtured, they will struggle controlling their behaviour. Another reason is that the neural networks that are created when we learn something new, more about this in a second, are all rooted in the limbic system. When we are born, we have the roots of neural networks developed in our limbic system, but they are blank. As soon as the baby opens its eyes, hears something, smells something, it begins to learn and neural networks begin to develop. These become a mesh that covers the upper cortex of the brain, but they are all rooted in the limbic system. So if the limbic system is not well developed, then the roots of our intellectual thoughts are on insecure foundations. The limbic system is also important because of the physical change that happens in our brain when we learn something new. In our brain we have neurons, or brain cells if there's any PE teachers watching. When we are about to learn something, then dendrites around the neuron begin to reach out to other neurons. When a connection is made, an electrical signal can pass from one neuron to another. This is what happens when we learn something new. This connection is called a synapse. If we learn something once, the synapse is created, but if we repeat that learning, then a chemical called myelin begins to coat the synapse. The more we use the synapse, the more we, re we revisit that piece of learning, the more myelin is deposited on the synapse until there's a thick sheath covering the link. This allows the information to pass from one neuron to another at extra high speed. This is why you need to think hard to remember your own phone number, because you don't call yourself that often. But you don't give a second's thought about walking, because you've done that so many times. 
These synaptic links don't just happen between local neurons. Neurons reach out to other neurons across the brain to create new links, new learning. And the more links that a neuron can make, the more secured that piece of knowledge will be. Well, what has this got to do with the limbic system? Well, if we magnify the synapse, we can see that the two neurons do not join. There is a gap for the electrical pulse or the information to cross. One of the key components in helping the information to cross this gap is a chemical called dopamine. Dopamine is one of those feel-good chemicals that your body releases when you've just done, done for example, a gruelling run in torrential rain that makes you come home saying, oh, that was great, and oh, I feel fantastic, but everyone else stares at you as if you're mad. Now, the flow of dopamine into the upper cortex is controlled by the limbic system. If too much is released, then the information becomes scrambled. If not enough is released, then the information doesn't get through. The limbic system needs to be in a healthy state if you want the amount of dopamine to be just right, and so enable the synapses, the bridges of our learning, to operate effectively. So, in a nutshell, to ensure that you are the best student, you need to create a safe, calm environment to learn in. You need to build positive relationships with your teachers and other people in your class. You need to repeat what you have learnt over and over and over and over and over and over again at least seven times. You need to connect what you have learnt with as many different things that you already know. And finally, always pay attention to your amygdala. It's always there waiting to explode. It needs nurturing and soothing to ensure your upper cortex is free to show what it's made of. Please feel free to get in touch with me on Twitter at John Stanier one or visit Great Torrington School's website at gts.devon.sch.uk to see how we develop our pupils' limbic systems to ensure that they are excellent learners. <laughs>